So here we are talking about line boring a little bit more and uh, this is our trusty 988. We use it for a forklift. It has some itty bitty forks, which the itty bitty forks are kind of cool too. These were made during the pipeline. Look at that. T1 plate laminations. That was uh, during the pipeline. It was hard to get things sometimes. They wanted another set of forks, so they built them. And uh, they've worked fine. Nice rigid. Sometimes it would be nice to have the other swinger style, but uh, yeah, all in all, these are good. I like them. What I wanted to talk about here on line boring is you got a bunch of pinholes. Now we could line up on this hole with whatever the hole is, but this hole may not be in the right position right now. And if this hole is not in the right position, say this hole is a little bit forward and it doesn't match with the other one over there, then as these parts move back and forth, they're gonna to wanna to put a little bit of a sideways force on the rods. So sometimes, just because the hole is in a place doesn't mean that it's right. It may have been line bored two or three times beforehand. Just picking up where the old hole is not always correct. So when you're doing a whole bunch on a machine and you have a chance, you know, your tires, sometimes you're just, ah, you can't do it right. You know, you just do what was there and you say, well, it was working yesterday. We fix it so it'll work as good as it did before it broke. But other times, if you have a chance to actually line things up, like here, you would ideally want to put your bar through both holes, through both of the, the holes on the lower where it pivots, so that your pivots run parallel to each other, so they're not doing this thing and trying to bend stuff. Um, it doesn't really matter if the spacing is off a little bit. If you don't have the specs, you can guess on that. That's not critical. But they really should be parallel to each other. Now, you got two options with that. One is you can do measurements. Say you find a hole in each of them and you can somehow measure the holes and this one's off, it's an eighth inch long here versus the other side. You can run an indicator like I was talking about inside with the bar and you can decide how far to move it one way or the other to get the hole offset from the one that's there to where it should be. Uh, the other thing you can do, which used to be really popular uh, in the 90s, because in the 90s, Caterpillar loved people working on their machines before the uh, aftermarket really got to be a threat to them. Uh, they loved to have people working on their machines and they really didn't care what was going on. They just wanted to see them out there working. So they printed all of the specs for the dimensions for their wear parts. You could go and get from Caterpillar any day of the week you wanted. They'd give you all the dimensions for where these holes were and then people that were doing a lot of line boring would make templates that had where those holes were. So you just go up to any machine that you were working on and if it was a 988, you had a 988 template you'd put up here. Any of the holes that were still good, you'd pin onto them and it'd tell you right where the next hole's supposed to be. And that was uh, pretty cool stuff. They quit, I think it was early 2000s when they quit printing those. They had a whole list of them that you could buy from them. And then they, re they requested all those back. And now they'll give you dimensions uh, if you request it properly and you're doing an approved repair. And I've gotten dimensions from them now and then on jobs I've been on. But it's not like it used to be. They had a microfish system in the 90s that you could buy from them for about $10,000 that covered every machine that they had for all of the important dimensions. And... Uh, it's pretty pretty handy. We had that uh, we had that set of files up there at Red Dog Mine, and uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was it was nice of them, but yeah, you can you can move stuff around and put it where it needs to be. And this machine has been a good old pig. Uh, this one, yeah, yeah, more just my stuff and whatever. When I was mining in 1989, we actually rented this machine. And I bought it somewhere in the 2000s. I don't remember when, but I bought the machine and I had actually owned it for a few months before I got to uh, crawling underneath it and uh, ignore the tire that needs air again. Okay, I admitted it. We were gonna just not show it on here. I know it had to show up. <laughs> we, we gotta put air in it. Um, but I, I got to looking at the center pin, and if you look underneath, you'll see there's a strap across there welded to hold that up where all of the bolts had broken out. When we rented this machine mining, 
Uh, we had to do that as an emergency repair because the bolts were all stripped out. It was falling out, and we just didn't even contact the people we were renting it from. We just said, let's patch it and get going. And I'd owned this for a couple months that I actually owned it and bought it. At the time that we rented it, it just had a bucket on it. I never even had thought about it being the same machine. And, uh, yeah, but it turned out to be the same machine. Couple, and I just I cracked up laughing when I looked at that strap. Hey, fluff ball.